welcome all to break down city. city. Let's kick it! What's going on guys? Welcome back. To break down city we do have a long day ahead of this we do have a special guest on the channel he has signed the sharp tone record the band savage hands they are from southern maryland i featured them on a few videos i've talked about them here and there on the channel um but it's finally come a time like he did agree to come and do some reaction with me just to tell you guys a little bit about his band and whatnot with further ado we're going to play some savage hand songs just so you guys can get a feel of this band and then mikey will join us here soon All right, welcome back, guys. We got Mikey right here from what's Savage up, Hands. What's up? Thanks for coming down, dude. Appreciate it. Yeah, man. Uh, it's only I live in the middle of nowhere, but if you live near civilization, you know this is actually pretty close. So I would say it's not too bad of a ride down here. It's actually nice this area. So yeah, not bad living out in the sticks, huh? No, yeah. I <laughs> see. I'm from the sticks, but like. I'm from the real sticks where there is no civilization. There's no gas stations, no grocery stores, no nothing. But yeah, this is definitely country living out here. I like it. Talk about your band a little bit. So I'm in a band called Savage Hands. We're currently signed to Sharp Tone Records. Uh, we just put out a full length back in January, you know, January 31st. It was uh, called The Truth in Your Eye. Bunch of uh, heavy hitter tracks on there, some soft ones. You know, you should give it a listen if you haven't already. And thanks for everyone who has listened to it and supported us. But uh, 
we're pretty much uh, from here, Southern Maryland. Uh, and then we have two members that came into the band uh, that live in Fredericksburg, Virginia. But for those of you who are not from this area, Maryland, Virginia, and DC, we, we kind of call it the DMV area. They're all relatively close. So luckily, you know, even though those guys are from a different state, they're not that far. They're about like an hour and 45 minutes away. So they take the time and travel um, to our practice spot down here in Waldorf, Maryland. Uh, and we lucked out for sure. Like, you know, it's crazy. A little bit of a backstory on the band. Um, Justin and I were cousins. We had another band before this and, you know, that band kind of fell apart. We grew apart and him and I and our old drummer, we wanted to continue to make music. So we wrote our EP, which was also released by Sharp Tone. It's called Barely Alive. We wrote that EP and uh, we started accumulating members after that, uh, after me, him and the drummer and our producer wrote it. And it's funny because I can remember there was a local show that we played where my old band, Avon, our current guitarist, old band, Alex, our drummer's old band, and Nathan, our current, you know, bass player, his old band, all of our bands were on a show together and we never you know, we played the show and we never knew that we would all be in a band together one day, right, but here yeah. we are, <laughs> you know, like we just took, I guess all everyone's bands kind of like went their separate ways and we, we got the people in each respective band that wanted to continue their passion with music. So that's a little bit of a backstory on Savage Hands. Um, but yeah, pretty much. And you guys did hear, you know, previously when before Mikey did join in on you, you they can throw down so they're not slate you know a little no that bouncy yeah I mean, they, they can throw down if they want to I mean he got the pipe so he can <laughs> lay down on the track yeah it's it's definitely it's definitely hard um we a lot of us come from like a predominant like metalcore background so it's always like in the back of our minds uh I've been screaming for so long you know I've been screaming since I was like 13 years old or 14 and doing like local bands around this area f since then. Um, and I kind of, I've always been singing. I've been singing since I was like eight years old, you know, with like the church choir or, or whatever it may be. And I kind of wanted to explore my singing range because my producer is constantly pushing me in directions that, you know, I never thought I'd take. And, when we started Savage Hands, he was like, hey, I think you should you should try to sing more. Like, you know, I really like your voice. You have like a unique voice and uh, work on your pronunciation a bit. And I think we have something. And I fell in love with the, the avenues that my voice took me to. Like, you know, I started doing things that I never thought that I'd be able to do. And it's crazy because you know, the way that I got better at singing was to cover some of my favorite bands. And back then, you know, I was covering a lot of Silverstein, Seosin with Cove Reber and uh, bands like Under Oath and things like that. And not to say that those vocalists don't have the range because they definitely do. But back then, like I was having trouble with their range and it seemed like, you know, that was it for me. Like I was capping out, you know, on those those vocalists range and then now when i like listen to some of those songs just feeling nostalgic like i can do the fairly easy like all of those vocalists you know i'm just like wow where, where when did it get to this point like how was i able to like barely do this back then and then now i'm like yeah i can do that and it's it's crazy how much you can grow through practice and the you know the correct amount of push um, you know, I've, I finally found like where my voice fits and what, where it doesn't fit, you know, cause being a vocalist, it's hard. You get into the studio and your, your adrenaline's rushing, you know, you got your guys out there or your producer that's really pushing you and to do this high note or do this crazy run and it takes you five times to do it. And then you nail the perfect take and you're like, oh my God, that sounds so cool. But then you have to think, you're like, well, it took me five times to do this. Is this something that I'm going to be able <laughs> yeah, to do live yeah. for five weeks straight? Maybe, maybe not. I don't know. So that was something that I battled with um, after our first EP. Uh, there was a lot of 
vocals on there that I think I think I was just singing in a key that didn't really uh, cater to like my range. You know, we were doing a lot of show off stuff. And so now most of the time when we get into the studio, the first thing we do is when we're writing a song um, and they're they're trying to pick a tuning you know, we'll, we'll create a rough scratch, like, like a scratch take of some vocals, like an idea that I have and I'll sing over it and see if it's comfortable, you know, like, and then it's, it just kind of like straight away from the heavy talk there, but that's, that's yeah, kind of I mean, like how it goes. It's definitely a process. <laughs> yeah. I mean, I'm, I mean, I don't want you guys thinking they can just go in, in the studio and just record whatever and, yeah. and just create magic. Cause you know, there's a lot that goes into creating that magic, especially on every single you know track that we re react to and you know especially with his band so yeah you sat he we invited him over uh to sit in on a writing session that we did not too long ago and i think that night but while you were there for what like eight or ten hours like all we did was write a chorus yeah that was <laughs> it and we were satisfied that's how it goes though like again like five or six years ago we could we could write a whole song in a weekend but now it's we're happy with knocking a chorus out you know and that's we already had the instruments written so we'll, we'll take we'll take a good couple of days writing instruments rough takes and then i'll hold on to it for a week and write to it and then uh you know we'll take a weekend to, to write vocals and however long it takes that's it we don't ever put a deadline on things because that's that's when things get sloppy. Yeah, so, you definitely want that. You don't yeah. want that sloppy shit in your, in your <laughs> no, production. No, no sloppy shit. That's what you shit. definitely don't want. <laughs> uh, but, yeah, but it's crazy like how, you know, like I was saying earlier, when you listen to your EP, Barely Alive, and then you go back to, you know, the truth in your eyes, you can clearly see the different the difference in production. I mean, don't get me wrong, they're both, you know, beautifully done. I just, I just like the truth in your eyes, like, you know, um, lyrically, especially, you know, on your... Uh, your take on lonely with uh, sleep paralysis, so that, that 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 track I know hits hits really uh, hard for you too. So yeah, it's crazy that track. Um, I that was one of the first tracks that we had instrumentally written um, out of the out of the eleven songs, and we had two other songs that were songs that were already like actual songs we had written them a long time ago and we kind of just came back to them and revamped them a little bit but lonely was the first clean like the first blank instrumental that we had and i had started writing to it and i was in the room and it was late and i wrote the chorus as he was as they were recording like a lead guitar part on it and i remember i showed it to the producer he heard me humming it or something and he was like what's that? What are you doing? And I was like, well, I had this course idea. And then he really like stopped everything that we were doing. Like he, he straight up like snatched the guitar out of Justin's hand and put it back on the stand and was like, got up without, and he didn't say anything to anybody. He just like got up, went over to the vocal booth that we had made, plugged in the mic and like did all this stuff. And he was like, all right, go in there and do that real quick. <laughs> and I was like, what like we're we haven't even done any vocals yet and he was like yeah well i can't I, we can't have you like forgetting that like let's go in there and do it so i i did like a rough take with no words i just like sang a melody with like random gibberish and then yeah we we held on to it that that song was like the one of the last songs that i actually tracked vocals to we left it alone for a while just to like resonate on that chorus right, idea yeah um like and it at that point in time when I wrote it, like I had no idea that I was gonna write it about sleep paralysis. Since it was towards the end of the album, I was kind of running out of ideas about things to to talk about. And then I was like, well, wait, like this is something that's like so dominating in my life. Like it happens like almost every night. I was like, I got a lot to say about this. Yeah, and why so, not to you know put it on paper and yeah, because you never know how other people may you know interpret the lyrics. You know, maybe to other people that could probably mean something different. Yeah, um, but. That's what I like about lyrics, you know, they can mean multiple things. And um, would you consider that probably your favorite song, you know, out, out of your, you know? I, so it's, it's definitely one of my favorites um, because 
whenever we write songs, I'm, I'm typically the one that's writing them. So they're, they're more or less like my issues or my things that I want to talk about. When I do that, you know, some, some of the things that I sing about are no longer problems to me. So those songs kind of like leave my memory a little bit, right. like not that I'm forgetting the lyrics, but just they don't like hold that special place. But Lonely is one of the songs that will forever hold a special place because I don't think I'll ever get rid of sleep paralysis, you know? And I mean, there's like medicine or, or things that you can do to subside it, but like more or less, it's just gonna, it's just gonna keep happening. It's, it's one of those things where you're, you're sleeping in an awkward position and it happens or you're not getting enough sleep or you're too stressed out in your normal day life that it happens. So yeah, I, that's never gonna leave me. So that right. song is always just gonna resonate in my mind and in my heart, you know, whatever. So I would, I'll definitely say it's in my top three favorites for right. sure. And plus it's just like mad heavy. And I always love bringing that back out because it's fun. You know, just like you were saying earlier, we can still bring it. And I felt like that song has such like a, like you just want to like punch something in that breakdown. It's just so like uh, heavy. <laughs> yeah. It's just de definitely like a unique kind of sound. Cause you know, when I, when I hear you guys break down, it's like, oh, I don't know if they're, you know, trying to throw it all in your face just yet. And then <laughs> yeah. that's when you think it's over, they, you know, you guys bring it back in. And then, you know, it's especially, you know, with that uh, track, uh, Useless. Oh, uh, yeah. You know, kind of the approach you were taking on that breakdown. And I was like, okay, now I see where they're going. That so. song got, that, that song went through so many changes. And for those who don't know, probably no one knows, but that song was... We recorded that song in 2015. Like we wrote and recorded that in 2015. That's a very old song. We wrote it before Savage Hands even had a name. Um, it was just when it was me, Justin, and our old drummer, Johnny, and our producer. And uh, we just held on to it for a while. And it didn't make it onto the EP. And then I think I, think I was just feeling feeling depressed about not having new music out before tour and I approached Sean and I said Sean we should put this song out like it has a music video and everything you know like what do you think and he was like I love that song and I was like well let's do it and then three <laughs> right. weeks later it was out I think it's our uh our second top played song on Spotify like it did really well people really liked it it's got like a it's got a nice like repetitive hook to it in the right. chorus so um, so what's so what would be the first one? I guess red or blue is it red or is it red? Blue? Red is red just hit a million streams uh, a couple of months ago, but it is not the top played. Like okay, uh, it's still it's still up there in the top three. But Demon is our top played song. Um, that one's next in line to to do cool things. I I really love that song. That was another song that we wrote the instrumentals a year before the vocals went on it so i had it forever and i had right. so many ideas for that song and literally none of them turned out to what it is now like all of my ideas pretty much just went in the trash can and yeah. then we wrote the newer so, version so i guess that is true like sometimes you know when i, I follow some bands like oh yeah we, we probably wrote about 30 40 songs and only 10 of them made it uh, it's yeah like, so i mean crazy. sometimes yeah. sometimes that's true and sometimes they're making shit up but I know for us, like, we wrote, like, 14 or 15 songs, but, like, I didn't track vocals on 15 songs. I tracked vocals on literally 11 songs. But we still have we still have songs that are in our vault, you know, from from back when we started recording and, and messing with Sharp Tone from 2016. You know, we, we might dig them back up and revamp them. We might not. I don't know. Like, there's a couple of songs that I... I did like that didn't make the cut. Figure we could pull parts from them or something like Frankenstein them together. Who knows? Like, it's just. And then maybe after this, I'll show you one of them tracks. Big old heavy breakdown, dude. You'll love it. I swear. I think that's why I didn't make it because it was just like too out of our zone. But would still kind of like to. Per perks of being in Maryland. Like, <laughs> yeah. I, I get a, I, a sneak peek. Yeah. <laughs> so, but yeah, so I do appreciate you joining me today on uh, taking time out of your busy schedule and coming down. We've got Labor Day weekend going on right now. So I do appreciate you coming down. It means the world. Big chill. Um, 
I will include all the links, you know, to Savage Hands socials in the bio included in, uh, you guys just released a merch store too, right? Yeah, so. yeah, that's still up and available. Um, you know, search for it in the bio or wherever he's going to put the link. Uh, I'm I'm doing all the packaging and shipping and stuff, so bear with me if you order. It usually takes up to two to three weeks just because I don't like to ship. Like, a, like if you decide you want to order something and you're literally the only person that orders this week or that I think is going to order this week, I try to give it at least a week to see if anyone else does order so that I'm not right. just going mm -hmm. all the way out there just to ship one package. So stay tuned, guys. We got some reaction videos coming. Keep your distance, you know. Yeah. Trying to keep our distance, you know. Yeah. But, I mean, we've hung out a couple times and, then, you know, so we're all, you know, in the whole mission essential realm. So I stay quarantined also. I don't go out. I became super uh, antisocial during all this. I got family. They're a little older. My sister's got two kids and I like to see all of them. Right, so yeah. I don't. They would allow me to come over even if I didn't quarantine myself, but I kind of just stay conscious. And I think that a lot of a lot of people out there, not saying your viewers, but just a lot of people, if you happen to watch this video and get to this point, you guys need to be a little safer. I definitely, or tell people to be more safer. We see a lot of people not following the rules and not wearing masks when they're out and everything. And I know it sucks. I work construction. Um, while I'm not touring, and I'm definitely not touring now, so I'm working. And yeah, I mean, I'm not saying you gotta be one of the people that wear a mask while you drive. No, I mean, no. Cause if I, if no, I you're a psycho if you, you know, do that. When I, when I see that, I personally want to snatch a motherfucker up out of a car. Yeah, you're a psycho <laughs> if you're if you're wearing a mask in the car while you're driving by yourself. You're a psycho. I'm sorry. <laughs> <laughs> All right, guys, we'll we'll see you on more videos today. Some peace with the secret So I'll make